Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you on Wednesday, July the 7th, the year's 2021. Let's talk trading. Bread and Butter Trades, Part 3, with Walmart. This video is for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine and from Walmart's. Walmart, welcome back. Well, thank you. <laughs> It's been a long weekend, it's been a holiday weekend here in the States and uh, spent some family time. Right. So, um, you know, last week we had, uh, well, you had actually said, used the term bread and butter trades when you were talking about, you know, in your main account, what you do to make your 10 pips a day and then you move on to other things. So uh, let's give the uh, boys and girls and non-binary traders your take on you know how you found bread and butter trades what you do um etc yeah for me anyway the bread and butter trades or bread and butter trade i guess for me is really the walmart trade more than anything else you know with the you know modifications that i've talked about here on this channel a couple of times about the idea of, uh, you know not necessarily just taking the trades off the 10 line or you know but also going and taking trades off the break of the high of the previous you know taking a long off the high of the previous hour or taking the, the, the break down off the low of the previous hour just adding that in there and just being able to just go in because i just know that it's just so successful does it work every time no of course not but it works often enough that i know that if i just go and make that trade and consistently make that trade follow my trading plan then i'm going to go at the end of the day have enough money in the bank to go and have subsistence have, have subsistence you know and that's an that idea you know i i know a lot of folks that may be listening who are not you know in the u.s i know this is not a not a phrase that may be known outside the u.s but you know essentially what it means is you know what do you need in order to live you need bread and you need butter because the bread gives you you know all the calories you need and the butter gives you all the protein and nutrients that you need and if you just have those two little things you know you can go and survive for a very very long period of time well you know the same thing is true with trading you know if i've got if i got a particular trade set up that i use day in and day out and it's successful day in and day out you know i can go and make enough money off of that to go and provide for my bread and butter and just pay my electric bill pay you know pay for whatever you know i need to go and have in place pay for the internet for that matter you know and that that's what i look at it as i need to go and have a trade that i know i can rely upon day in and day out and then you know, I can start playing with other things that are out there that can go and help me make some additional money, you know, and it's just, uh, you know, some, you know, some but I know you like to use the phrase pocket change, some money walking around money, go and have some money that you can go out and go and, you know, maybe go on vacation, take your wife, take your kids, take whatever out and uh, have it, have a little bit of a, a vacation with it and have some fun with it. And that's what I look at those other trades as. So, um, I was uh, showing the uh, traders how I use statistics to uh, come up with my method. How about you? Well, that's exactly what I do with the Walmart method was, you know, I just went and, you know, I used the very first the frequency distribution tool that you put together and said, hey, this is obvious, you know, this is just, I mean, it doesn't work every time, but, you know, it's the type of thing where I know that between a certain number of hours, it's going to go and range more than, you know, 13 or 14 pips 100% of the time, you know, and that just tells me, hmm. You know, very often, but you know, it it doesn't always, but m most of the time, it'll off it'll open somewhere in the middle of two two breakout lines. And if I know that, let's say it lands, you know, exactly in the middle, well, that's five pips to get to the line, and then there's. Uh, there's almost a guarantee, not always, but there's almost a guarantee that it'll go another eight pips and I can go and, you know, make eight, eight pips off the trade. Would it be nice to get 10? Absolutely. It would be nice to get 10. But the thing is, you know, it's almost like, it's almost like a given, or it may turn around, you know, go up there and get to the line and, you know, may only go up a pip or two. And so what do I do? I take a small loss and, you know, take the next opportunity along, you know, and that's what you got to do. And that's part of the, that's part of this trading game. You know, you got to, the, 
biggest thing, and I say this over and over again, and I'll say it to the, to the day I die probably, but the reality is, you know, with, with trading and making money, at least for me anyway, it's not the method, it's just the controlling of risk, you know, making sure that you're not over leveraged, making sure that you're, if you're in a trade and a trade's just not going what the way you expected it to go, find a way to go and get yourself out of that trade, or at least mitigate the damage uh, that's uh, that's on the table right now. And that's, you know, and I think that's part of bread and butter too, but from a different perspective, you know, we, we, you're talking about, you know, bread and butter, what's your bread and butter trade? No, what's the, what's the methodology? How do you get into a trade? You know, what's your bread and butter get into a trade? You know, which trades seem to make enough money for you to go and have subsistence? And I'm saying that, yeah, that's great. And that's true. But in addition to that, part of your bread and butter is also making sure that you've gone put all the things that you need in place in place to go for, um, so that you know that at the end of the day you know you're able to go and take advantage of what you can take advantage of because it's statistics exactly what you said because if i take the trades statistically i know over the long run i'm going to make money therefore what am i going to do i'm going to take the trades you know and we'll have some losers in there yep we'll have some winners in there yep and statistically i should be okay Right, and um, in fact, today, in, in this particular hour, um, the uh, previous hour's low was at 3803, and the Walmart line was at 3800. Yeah, exactly, you know, and it's the type of thing where, you know, if you would have taken that trade, you know, now the very first, you know, um, uh, the very first uh, one minute candle, it did crack the 10 line or barely cracked it, you know. Um, if it, you know, and but the thing is, you know, I always have my rule in place where I don't like to go and trade off that very first candle, you know, I just don't like to do it. And I think you have that rule as well. I'd rather go and see, you know, wait for it to go and develop a little bit. So I wouldn't have taken that trade to, to the long side. So I would have not had that. I wouldn't have taken that that loss there. But you know, when it went and broke to thirty eight hundred, you know, the reality is that you know from that point to right now, that's forty pips. It's down. You know, it's dropped down forty pips from there. You could have had a massive winner there. Now, honestly, if I was trading, you know, because I'm already done for the day. But if I had trade, you know, I probably would have gotten out with probably seven or eight pips. You know, just because of the way candles went and stacked up, I probably would have taken my money off the table at seven, eight pips and said, okay, I can wait for the next hour, you know, but at the same time, that would have been the first trade. The second trade that I would have, you know, would have taken, I would have gotten in again, you know, probably the, uh, at the 3790 and tried to get in for a second run, you know, and maybe picked up another five, six, seven pips. And that would have been my 10 pips for the day and gotten in in one hour. But that's, you know, that's that that's neither here nor there i didn't do it because i wasn't trading but that's how i would have played it and that would have been my bread and butter if i was just you know started trading you know at this particular hour you know that would be my way to go and make my bread and butter yeah because um one of the other things um because um we've been talking about it and i talked about it um with the uh, traders is that you know, if price comes back to that daily open and price hasn't ranged what it normally ranges, um, to start trading away from the open. So what we saw today was um, price crisscrossed the open a couple times. And, you know, it the last time it went to the upside on the H1 candle, it actually took out the pivot. And then it actually crossed above the weekly open. Then you see it crossed below the weekly open, then below the daily open, and it's been toast. Yeah. I mean, if you would have taken that trade this, uh, to this hour, you know, when it crossed the open, you know, at least on my chart, that, that could have been potentially a 45 pip run. Right. You know, let's say you, let's say you put a, a five pip, you know, buffer in there. I know one of the traders that's uh, out on Facebook, he talks about putting a five pip buffer on that. You know, if you would have done that, you still would have been up 40 pips if you stuck to trade, you know. I'm not saying that you, we, I'm not saying that we're all smart enough to go and do that, but potentially that, that's the type of, uh, 
you know, type of thing you can do. Now, what I like to do is I kind of alluded to it already is that a lot of times I'll go in and take my money off the table and put it in the bank. And if I get another signal that says, keep on going away from that open, go and take that additional signal going away from the open, maybe pick up another four, five, six pips, whatever it may be, you know, and that's, that's just another way of playing it. Right. And so, you know, and looking back, um, we had where it actually crossed above the opening range for the month at 38.35 today, and then it's fallen down. Uh, then it broke through the uh, the low of the opening range for the week, um, and you're about 50-some pips below that, which was right around 38.15. So there was, there was a couple of trades um, in those areas below the... Um, Let's see. Um, below the uh, monthly range, the top of that monthly range where you could have gotten in. Right. You know, so, and that's the thing. There's lots of opportunities out there. And what we have to do is we have to go and say, hey, this is how I'm going to make my money. You know, again, based on what you said earlier, based off statistics, you know, and, and also based on what you're able to execute and execute well. You know, it's the type of thing if you're, if, you know, if you're the type of person where, you know, you say, hey, you know what, I, I see it, it makes sense, but for whatever reason, I just get in too late, you know, and so on a five pip run, I'm missing the first three or four pips of it. Well, that's probably not the way to go and trade it. Maybe you need to go and figure out another way. Maybe you put pending orders out there. Maybe you go and find a different way to go and trade it, you know, and that's, and that's what you may have to, have to go and do, you know. And in fact, you know that I do this a lot of times, so I don't go and miss trades. So a lot of times at the beginning of the hour, after the first five minutes, I put two tra uh, pending trades out there, one, one, you know, one at each end of the extremes, and, uh, and then I have a, a little, uh, you know, indicator that goes and sends me a text message if I hit that line. You know, and that way I know that, hey, you know, I, I, I got into the trade in case I, I got up and walked away, get a cup of coffee or something. Hey, this thing went and plummeted and it entered your trade. You better get back to your station and pay attention to what's going on, dude. You know, yeah. and, I'll, and I'll go and do that. <laughs> yeah, it's like yesterday. I've got the uh, missed pivot uh, chart up at the moment. And yesterday, if you notice, it took out a missed pivot from, let's see, what day was this? It took out the miss pivot from the uh, 29th of June, and then it also took out the miss pivot from the uh, from July the 5th. So yesterday took out two missed pivots. Mm. Yeah, it and does so, that consistently. And so you know, and and that is something you know. So we talk about bread and butter trades. You know, that was one of the ones and. That, that I really like trading on the yen, um, but since we've been doing the pound dollar for what over a year now, yeah, a year and yeah. a half, maybe a year and a half or something, um, I haven't been looking at that. But you know, the same th you know the same rules apply when you look at how many times it misses the pivot versus how many times it takes it out. And you know that's just one of those little bread and butter trades. In fact, I know there was one trader that's all they're trading now are pivots. Right. And you can make, you can certainly make money on that. You know, when you think of those old time traders, you know, a lot of them, how did they make their money? You know, they, they were even making their money in what, what they call, you know, bucket shops where you're literally trading against the, uh, the house that you're in, you know, and that's always, that's always dangerous when you're trading against the house, you know, but they, that's how they made their money because, you know, it's a simple calculation they could do in their head on, or maybe on a little, you know, back of a napkin or envelope. Yeah, exactly. And you can do it so quickly and so easily, you know, and it worked, you know, so we're talking about, this is something that's kind of, you know, talking about bread and butter and talking about statistics. You know, these guys were doing this 150 years ago, 200 years ago, and they were doing this, you know, where numbers were, you know, weren't coming out of a computer or anything, but they were literally shouting the numbers across a pit someplace, you know, and if you're able to do it there, you certainly can go and do it with a computer. Right, because right. you know it just works, and you know, and the reason why it works, I think, is just because price has got a range, but in the process of ranging, price also goes and it breathes, and that means it goes back and forth a little bit. So those pivots just 
point to places where we're, we're going to have a place where it's going to go and turn possibly, or it's got a place where it's going to run to. And because there are so many people out there that go and use it, sometimes it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, it's the type of thing where if enough people think that, you know, let's say right now, everybody thinks that price is going back to, let's say, you know, 3790 or 3800 there's enough people out there who think it's going to go there. Well, guess what? Price is going to go there. And guess it's what? <laughs> We're oh, out no. of time. <laughs> so <laughs> fastest 15 minutes of trading is up. So fellow traders, come back tomorrow. And I, I believe we'll do part four. Just remember, it's not what you trade. It's how you trade it. So drain the banks. Rumpled one over and out.